consider yourself a fisherman? Just how far do you want to take it? Guys, Wayne's taking the uh, the trailer up, so we're down here off the south coast. Gonna give it a go. Not a big fish today. He's gonna be looking for small fish. Wayne's gonna be looking for red mullet, garfish. That's one of just trigger fish. What's the other bream? Breamy thing. Somebody, somebody, listen. If you're out there, tell me what's that breamy thing. Well, it's not red bream, obviously. Ever. Years since we caught those down in the West Country. Probably get might get black bream and uh, anything else comes along. So it's a small fish one, light tackle. I'm gonna drop something big down, always do. You know what I'm like, I can't help it. Look, the water's very, very clear. They've, they forecast like thunderstorms. Um, <laughs> well, you can, hopefully they stay up over there. Uh, gonna be going to a um, little mini wreck, just left outside the entrance, really. Not far out mile or something like that. And I've bought with me this here. I bought some sash weights here, like sash, old sash called window weights. Had them 40 years. Knew I knew they come in for something. Uh, some eight or ten mil polypop, and they're a world famous marker boy. What we call Dan, Dan marker. I'm going to drop that down and see if we can't pinpoint the wreck so we know which way it's going on the tide and the wind. And also in there, I've got uh, my bait dropper um, for dropping down chopped up fish. Yeah, Wayne was out wreck fishing yesterday. Long way out, further out than I want to go. So let's uh, get aboard the boat, just get out there and see what we can catch, folks. Just nice to be on the boat. This is only a look, 15 feet. It's a shallow wet, but you can already see there's bits and pieces of rubbish there on the bottom. And as we move forward, there's some real strange goings on underneath the surface there. That's some weird sounder looking efforts there with a vacuum in the bottom, a hole in the bottom of it, goes straight through to the center of the earth. So we anchored up as best we could there, just out front of the post, and uh, dropped the baits down. Come on, try it. It definitely, this is one of those strike and it snaps because I know it's gone through. Well, there's rats yeah. here, they do look like hidey holes, don't they? In any sort of. I'm definitely, definitely in some form of. No, nothing there. No, some have definitely pulled that line. I felt tanked. It could be a doggy, I suppose. Yeah, we don't want the rain. Mm. Just, just changed position, re-anchored, and Wayne's had a bit of a scream here. Was that a worm on it, Wayne? Yeah, literally. How long's that been out? Thirty seconds. Yeah, and... it just went off like a bullet. I mean, I had the, the drag set light, but wow, that did go off nicely. Super nice that was. It flew, absolutely screamed off. What we got here? What we got here? What have we got oh, here? Pollock? Rass. Rass, well look at it, nice one. 
Cool he gave Cool he's a nice one, yeah. He gave a cracking account. Look at that, no wonder. Wow, what a what a good fight he gave. That is not a bad. That's a chunky one, isn't that? Yeah. That is not a bad bun and rass. And you think where we are, you know, yeah. we're just inside the uh the screamer. This is outside the arbor. What bait then, Wayne? Um, mostly squid, little strips. Um, I feel this is an eel. You think so, yeah? I think so. It just has got every feeling of an yeah, eel. Yeah, you got him right, called him right. And a ras. Oh, double whammy. Double it. <laughs> Certainly didn't want the eel. <laughs> the ras is all right, but the eel, no thank you. He will just mess my rig up. Rig up. And the rest is well. fun. It shows just that tide makes a difference, though, doesn't it, Wayne? Being stuff on the feed. Exactly. Once it, once it starts moving, um, as you well know yourself, Graham. Once it starts moving, the fish start biting. Yeah. yeah. So. Go on. Fake news thing, Russia and... No, he's gone through something. You know he feels... Zzz, zzz, zzz. Yeah, he's gone through, so I think I'm going to have to take a chance if I miss him, I'll miss him. You know, if it's a small one, I'll miss it. It's better than having a big one and it's in a snag. Yeah. Oh, he's gone through it. Because he heard me say, that's a big one. Yeah, 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 Yeah, yes, yeah, too. Yeah, probably might be a little small deal. Have you bought some um, fish bikes? Yeah, not really interested in that too much. They seem like those worms, don't they? Mm. I might change that bait to a uh, mackerel, basically, uh, decent. Oh, that's a better eel. If I get him off the bottom. Maybe he's not. Oh, he's come for you now. I think he's around a bit of snag. But hopefully he's come out. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, no, he's still on. He's in the snag again. Oh, my God, he's gone in again. How oh, happy days. What a... B That's a one-way ticket with Braid, I'm sure. See what... Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, just... No, he's still on. I just want to know we've moved in shore. Now I'm going to give it a go in here. Oh, 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 oh. What is this then? It's on worm. I've got rid of the two hooks. This must be a bream, I'm assuming. I think I'm under the... What's that one, Wayne? Oh, that's one more. See, I've just got bait out, so... Is that a float, though? No. I've got some chuntering around there, I'm guessing a, a bass. Let me come around that way. I'll come up. That's him. Oh, I'll bring my hand as well. Bring my hand. Is it a bass, is it? Or? Bass. Fair one, you know, for the harbour. Oh, yeah. Got it. Wow. Good start. Very good start. There I'll go. Cheers, man. There he goes. So nice to get a little bass like that. Um, some of the worms are quite large, Wayne. Explain about them. Yeah, well, uh, these are all dug. Um, got them this morning uh, from Kosham Angling, uh, where I work. I mean, look at this one. <laughs> that is a strangler. Well, it, that's over foot long. It's got to be. Well, see, this you don't catch them on these worms. What happens is you. you Basically, they go down, they strangle the fish like anaconda style, and then yeah. uh, you just reel them in. That's over a foot long when it stretches out. Yeah, that's it? a big old uh, ragworm. I mean, so that'd be stingray size, would it, Wayne? Yeah, yeah. I mean, big. Oh, you free lined that for a bass. Thing is, I don't know why people people want these little tiny, I mean, smaller than that, really, worms for uh, 
for, for sort of uh, place and whatever. Do you know what? Well, years ago, when the place were heavy on the ground, that would be a brilliant place, mate. You put that on there, and a, a place would, would suck that in in a couple of mouthfuls. So, and yeah. these are local ones, they dug locally. Oh, do you know what? I wouldn't know where they were dug from. I mean, they're they're fairly local. They've got to be within driving distance of the of yeah. the uh, diggers, or it's not worth them doing it. Giant there, look at that. But, but yeah, there's, uh, there's there's I mean, we've had we've used that half a pound already, but. Yeah, I mean, there's a variety. It's a nice. You can always see there's a variety of worm. Um, beautiful condition. You yeah. Know, so really. if any of us come in a shop, they buy those off you. Obviously, they wouldn't use them all. Let's say, put them in a the fridge at home, store them in a the garage. That's the best place for the you know beginner to get them. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing with worm storage, it, it's, it can be really awkward, right? They don't seem to like sudden temperature changes. What I've found is, whatever the fridge temperature is that we've got at home, if I put these in the, oh, my fridge at home. I can never tell, it seems to vary. Back of the free, fridge can freeze sometimes and all sorts of awkwardness, but they don't like it. So I'm better off getting one of these trays, putting them in. I haven't got any clean paper. If I had some cleaner paper, what I'd do is every now and again, I would uh, I would just change that paper. You just give them something different to read. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a sun. I don't think uh, there's not too much information in this paper. But um, yeah, a bit of clean paper. When it's wet like that, it just it, they're leaching out all their natural juices. It's not particularly good for them to sit on that. Yeah. So a change of paper, give them plenty of space. So we, we were talking about them early on because we got uh, thundery weather today. Don't get fresh water on them. No, no, absolutely not. That that's one thing um, they don't like. If, if you if you see any brick broken bits, don't chuck them away. They they still catch. Um, the, the, the broken uh, bits of worms still catch, but use them first. So get all the broken bits out. I do feel that sometimes you got a bit in like that. A tail's yeah. come off. Um, that leaches out all its juices on them. They don't like that. I'd get rid of that for a start. So that that'll be the next bit going on as a bait. But I mean. See a worm that big one, well, any big one. Like yeah. several baits, weren't they? Yeah, wanted. that for what we're fishing for, which is obviously hoping for like gilt heads, red mullet, bits and pieces. You get you get four out of that, you might get six out of that. So, yeah, you don't want to put look, if you put that much worm around the hook and there's that much hanging over the edge, that's yeah, you're gonna nip it off the back as well. It, they? Yeah. You just you just feeding them, you're just wasting it really. Now, so, I've got some mackerel I've bought with me, so now the tide's about right. You think it's worth me chopping it up and putting it down in the bait drop or something? Definitely. I mean, if you look over the background there, you can see we've come right inside the harbour. You've got Hailing Island over there at the back. Um, you've got uh, Langston Bridge uh, over there. Binnis Island behind us. Farlands and Marshes over there. We're, we're right in the middle of the harbour. We're only in about 14 feet of water. But um, there's fish here. There's, there's, there's fish here, so... I'm going to go for a chopping session then. Yeah, let's get it down there. It's always worth cutting up baits, even if you're not going to use it. Sometimes you thaw the baits out and very often you don't get the bites you think you're going to get and you have bait left over well if you don't want to freeze it again why not cube it up and drop it in for the fish to eat so this is a bait dropper i made up um, just how we used it before we used it down Falmouth, didn't we, Wayne? We used it down Falmouth. We did use That's it to right effect as well. Yeah. Some great big mackerel. Yeah, and uh, basically got a big two pound lead on the bottom there. I lower it down on a piece of core line or core lean, whatever they call that orange crab line stuff. I've got a rubber bung at the top to fill it because you don't need that. It opens at the bottom. It's got the proverbial coat hanger wire of some description there. A little T piece at the bottom to hold the lid. So when it hits the bottom, this goes loose and then the ground bait can tumble out, pumping it up and down like this. Or you can even leave it and just let all tiny particles come out all those holes. I use 14 drill bits to get all that done. But we're gonna put some in here and drop it down. Just pack it in there, a little tip, make sure when you put the little tripping mechanism here that you hold it and you don't release it in the boat. Bit tricky when you've got the weight of the lead there as well. Let it fill with water first. Got it on just old, 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 old piece of uh, plywood cut with a couple of notches in it and a hand there so you can wind it back on easier. Give it a few pumps up and down that'll release it all and hopefully brings a few fish up with it. So I can wind that back up like that. I wouldn't use one of the little plastic crab lines because they will break with quite a bit of weight there coming up. 
you can make your own you can you can do it with a piece of smaller pipe if you want a piece of drain pipe it doesn't have to be a piece of four inch soil pipe a little bonus tip you know it gives you a bit of fun to the day a bit of spice to the day Wayne's got one of the target species he wanted. Beautiful, look at that, exactly what I wanted. Come on, son. Watch him fall off. Yes. There we go. Excellent, exactly what I wanted to get. See the uh, set up there? Yep. Just a float, little strip of squid, little tiny hook. Hook well too, Wayne, just there, uh, just grab that. Now, if you just struck too soon, you'd have missed him, wouldn't you? I think so. Yeah, I'm, exactly I'm glad I never really saw it. I heard the, the reel go before in the hour, so the reel set really, really light. And, um, that's exactly what I wanted. Perfect. Got a bit of bait diggers bucket going on here, so I've got the rest of the squid. This was a, a frozen squid which I've had some time and not used, but by mistake I bought out some freshwater fish. These look like roach from what I've had from small pike fishing and perch fishing, and there's some old um, prawns. So we're going to whack all these up. But basically, these are going in the chum tube when we move. We're going to have another go outside, find another sort of reefy, wrecky mark. There's a small perch here. Shame to cut him up, but he's going to good cause. And then we're all ready to uh, drop some of this stuff down. It's always, always August, September time worth putting a bit of chum over the side because you never know what's going to come around. That's when the water's normally it's the warmest over here in the UK. So we've got a good load of chum there to try. And we're going to have a move and try a little mark outside. I think it's a reefy, rocky mark. So I don't think the bear, the weight couldn't have touched the bottom then, Wayne. It didn't, because look, I've got the other rod, and I was about to put yeah. some bait on it, and this one went zzz, so I'd like to think it's possibly a bream, it could be a wrasse. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what was the, that was genuinely 30 seconds. Three years. Wait, quickly go back and bait see out. what he does. See you later. Go on. Most worth a move, wasn't it, Wayne? So we, we're, well, out, we're outside now, just basically off the middle of Hayden Island, I suppose you call it, with your generalisation, middle of Hayden Island. Yeah, Hayden Bay, just the, Hayland the, Bay. the, the um, west side of Hayden Bay. And there's a bit of uh, rough ground in front of us. Holds lots of fish, people don't realise, you know, I mean, I've overlooked the inshore marks for many years. And wrongly, well, and wrongly so, because there's some really good fishing to be had here. I had a 30 pound stingray here, trigger fish, all sorts of bits and pieces, so. Yeah, well worth it, and um, lovely spot on a, on a really calm, flat day to take the family. Plenty of fish there. Plenty. Bit of action, bit of action. Big bit of rough ground here, football pitch size at least, and there's lots of fish in it and around it. So I've got just an expendable weight here, see that guys? It's an old stainless nut donated by Wayne, and uh, it's snaggy and it's on a lot, like a loose link here. So if I do get a fish, that'll break first and leave me attached to the fish, because it is rocky here. And if you start swinging around on the wind or the tide, it can drag your leads in. So it's shallow enough here. Uh, uh, it's worth a it's worth a nut throwing out. I feel. on the bottom, give it a pump up and down. Watch out, there were some hooks in the bottom of this. Uh, oh God. This, this, You fish with a squid tentacle sometimes, Wayne? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're only going for little small fish, so, you know, one squid provides a lot of bait. I mean, that, you know, even these little shooting tentacles, they're, they're good. They, uh, in fact, I can't even put that on. There you go, that's what I'm going to put on the float. 
ideal thing about that, the ideal thing about that is you can actually feed it on worm style, which I'm about to show you. My fat fingers. Quite a fine wire hook that one too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, nice and sharp. So just feed it on, just put it past the knot, hold it on, and that will wiggle nicely in the water. Mackerel, gar, scad, whatever's in the surface there. I've had a conga come up and take something like really? that once. Yeah, it was no fun. Yeah, do not speak with forked tongue. I'd like to be able to say that's one of Wayne's nuts I'm fishing with, but <laughs> it was donated by Wayne. You think using that nut like that, you wouldn't be able to cast or anything. Of course, it hasn't got the same density as a lead, but if you watch this, it goes as far as I want it to go. Just stop it before it hits the water so it sends the, the bait past it. And providing you haven't got a lot of tide, like here, shallower, that's down now. And you don't feel the lead. The lead is better for feeling the bottom. With the nut, you don't feel the bottom so much, but you'll feel it go slack. And that's enough there. As I say, that fish took it. So expendable weights when you're over rough ground. So just for a bit of fun here, Graham's brought these roach. Yeah, yeah. roach fry, small one. Yeah, roach out. So why not? Let's put a couple on. So I'm just going to hook him under the chin latch through the top of the head. And he'll hang straight, yeah. And who knows what uh, what will get on it? Something, nothing, who knows? There's bream are sure to enjoy those, I feel, Wayne. We'll oh, soon they? find out. Yeah. There we go. This is at the bottom. I mean, you know, that crabs are leading. <laughs> yes, they won't get wasted. Well, I didn't film them all, but we had plenty of small fish there, a little bream, but the clouds, look, were closing in around us. There was absolutely no question that despite four or five different marks we moved to, we were still getting these small black bream and wrasse. So plenty of action on the, uh, on the worms, but the weather was definitely closing in around us. But it does not look good up there. On the other hand, we are only in the bay, so it's a short hop back if anything disastrous happens our way. Maybe it'll miss us, maybe it'll miss us. Well, I persevered throwing that uh, sort of old wheel nut around. It's just enough. You, you get a big spring tide, you're gonna have to fish with leg weights, but when there's neap tides, which is a small tide, you can get away with using pretty well anything. In fact, on one of my uh, films, I actually did catch fish using mole grips for a weight and an old shed bolt. It's true, it's up on our playlist. Oh, a bit different way. It's the best fight so far. Look, it's really, really going, this is. Even there's a couple on there. It's a better bream altogether, or it could be a trigger, let's say, or it could be a manquil. <laughs> That's it's pretty rare, I think, to get a conger eel taking a ragworm. It shows you they must have really been on the feed to take a bait that small. It's a funny coloured one, mate. It was a funny colour. Is it rash? Rash. Oh, I wonder what it was, yeah. Bad rash. Oh, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to go outside, folks. It's horrible out there. <laughs> Just looking up the front, you can see pretty gray, pretty horrible. We've been lucky, though, we? We've we been lucky, I feel. We've been very lucky. This is the first yeah. time, really, we've had any heavy rain. Given the forecast. And there we go. Do you catch fish in the rain? Yes, the answer you do. is yes. There's Mr. Rass. Oh, hey. He's already on his way to the build. Sa safe release. Caught queen, black spot on the tail. Another species. Oh, good. And watch that. See you later. Straight down. Well, the rain stopped. Rain hasn't stopped. Play for Wayne. He's picking out these little mini bream. Yeah. They're scoffing a ragworm as fast as they can go. They are. 
You see, it's starting to clear away a little bit now. I think it actually looks more ominous than it is. I keep expecting something like a tornado to drop out of there. Well, guys, something peculiar is happening with the wind and the tide here. We don't know if the storms move the wind round and the boat's swinging, but it might be slack water. So you don't always have to use this bait dropper. You can just, when it's like this, you can get bits of chum and just drop it over the side. And if you see, it does pretty well go down. In fact, if anything, I think that tide's turned, Wayne. I think it's going back up to the wind, the tide, 100%. Really? Yeah, 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 the chum's going that way. So the tide might have turned. But now's the time when you get slack water, very low, low movement like this in a tide. You might just as well get your chum over the side, so at least it's working in this area, because the boat's going to swing round not entirely round the other way because the wind's going to hold us. It's caught up with us, Wayne, isn't it? It's caught up with us. <laughs> I think we've uh, we've pushed our luck all day and we might have pushed it about half an hour too late, but yeah. never mind, we're under the canopy. Yeah, good old Wilson canopy. We were just saying, it needs to be about another barely six inches longer. Yeah, it would be ideal, but then there'd be more pressure on it and bounce more. Yeah, more wind under it if you'd shark yeah. drifting or something. It's going way up over the South Downs. We, it's sort of gone either side of us, really. We've been very lucky, I feel, today. Well, there we go. Double it in the rain. Black bream on that top hook and a lovely, colourful tub gurnard. Whoa, he just spiked me about. I can't blame him, but beautiful. Look at the Probably wings, together, yeah. Look at those, uh, that one right there, yeah. Look at those, look at those wingtips. Two nice fish, yeah. Amazing colors, isn't it, mate? Those beautiful fish, beautiful fish. Let's quickly T bar them off. I don't want to keep either of them. It just goes to show what exactly what we're saying. We're after species. Number one goes, and we hope he's well, which I think he probably will be. And he will go well. Oh, we try to get the T-bar. There we go. Good job. He'll, he'll go, watch him. He gets bearings and off he goes. <laughs> Mate's back in again, people, so... <laughs> so back That's in the, the way it is, we're in and out. Back in the cover. And you reckon these umbrellas with the metal shaft are handy because they can double as a lightning rod, is it, right? <laughs> is, that, is that what you sent me out here? <laughs> you, you, you rubber soles on, have you? Get them out, the fuse to the fiberglass. See that off, but no, there's been, there's been no rumbles of thunder and no lightning. If there was, yeah, we'd be yeah. getting these down and getting in, I'll tell you. It's just, Rain at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you, don't mess, you don't mess about with fishing rods, carbon fishing rods, and, and lightning. That's just a no. You're out here, what's it going to hit? It's over the top here, yeah? it's going to hit these rods. Yeah, they're the highest point, aren't they? Yeah, consequently, you know, anything that's then conducts that strike and it can uh, bounce off of stuff and hit you, so. No thanks. Well, I've had a pretty fair day today, to be honest. The weather's not been fair, though, but look how it's turned up. The storm's gone through, the tide's flowing the other way, but just the fish aren't just biting, so it's just the way it is. We're going to go in and uh, obviously have a beer, I hope. Uh, but the other thing we do, have a look through your boatyard, Wayne, and uh, see what's in there, What uh, maybe you've got some tips and stuff, and see what we can do and see you know, what's basically going on if anybody's looking for a boat. So we're not done yet. Don't go away, we'll show you a few teaser clips and what else is going to come up on Wayne's own channel.
at it. Yeah, absolutely lovely. Good one, yeah. Coming down this side. So folks, there we are. We've uh, arrived alive, as I say, a bit old onto the boat. But well, what we're gonna do now, Wayne's got a YouTube channel he's just starting and uh, he's put a few films up, I think it's last year, some wrecking and stuff. But you might want to buy a small boat like this. You might want to buy a small boat similar to this. So he's gonna take us around his yard here and show you the multitude of vessels that you can buy and possibly some of the trials and pitfalls and that that you can slip up if you don't have the knowledge so it'd be worth hanging around but that one will be on Wayne's channel I'll probably edit that for him and put it on his channel and he's looking for some extra subscriptions there guys so give Wayne a shout and uh, if you like on his channel if you like what uh, what he does you know give him a, a, subs a subscribe we were trying to get him over a thousand views that's what we're so we were trying to get him over a thousand subscribers Oh, you're there, sorry, Wayne, I'm, I'm, I'm in camera mode, yeah. I've got a real nice shot there with nobody standing by it, which is quite interesting. Oh yeah, mate, he's coming down there. Not the dinghy, that uh, the white one. The uh, one in front. Takes me minutes to get mine on, doesn't it? Push him out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, lovely. It's all yours.